What a beautiful day. I'm in my flappiest kit that I own. Uh, legs, unshaven, socks, folded, breaking all kinds of rules, riding in my easiest gear, and just enjoying life. And one of my favorite local roads that I always need to do at least once a year. This time, I thought I would try to do a little bit of a flash packing trip. So a two-day trip, camp one night, and just enjoy this amazing road. I can't get enough of this. So if you're watching my other videos, you already know that I'm a full-on bike gear nerd. And of course, a few things have changed to my bikepacking setup from last year. So in this video, I thought I would talk about my current setup, what's new, uh, what's old, of course, I am no veteran bikepacker. I'm definitely not an ultra distant racer. So my bikepacking gear is a lot more hefty than you would use for racing, for example. I'm not trying to go as light as possible. I love the actual camping part. I'm definitely not holding back when it comes to camping gear. That's also why I like to have tents, sleeping mats and stuff like that. Instead, yes, I have a bivy or a tarp or a cardboard, like someone suggested in a previous video. But if that works for you, that's brilliant. As long as we can ride and enjoy nature, use whatever you want. I will also drop the links to the Strava ride in the description if you want to know the actual route. And yeah. So as good as the road was back there, around the lake, this is where it really shines. Look at this jungle. Waterfalls, cliffs, yeah, overhang. And the pavement is beautiful this far. I know it gets a bit worse up ahead, but I'm on the 650B, so there shouldn't be any problem there. Look at this. Ah, I can't get enough. I realized I'm starting to run out of light, so I better record some of this before it gets dark. So I think I would start with the stuff on the bike, the bags and such, what's new and what's old, and yeah. So it looks pretty similar uh, to last year. The frame bag hasn't changed. It's the medium size backcountry, I think it's called now, frame bag. And the seat pack is the Expedition, the small nine liter version. Uh, on the top tube, we have a bit of a change though. This is the Pro Discover Range top tube bag. And since it's the first time I saw this bag back at Cycle Mode Bike Expo here in Tokyo, I became really curious about this bag because you can run it with a normal strap, but you can also bolt it down if you have those top tube bolts as the open has. Once I got this though, I realized that the holes for the bolts were way off. So the bag actually had a huge gap between the bag itself and the stem. So I had to be a bit creative. I got a hole punching kit from Amazon, measured out where I needed to have the holes and simply punched new holes to make it fit really snug. So you don't have a lot of space here. It's uh, pretty good and I really like this webbing you have on this side. You can just stuff your wrappers and plastic and uh, you know trash. So when you have it in sight, it's easy to throw away once you, once you find a convenience store or something like that. If you put it down in the bag, you usually forget about it and then you come home and have a lot of trash to take care of. So yeah, like that feature for sure. It's a bit smaller than my previous Topeak bag. It works well for me. It's a bit thinner, so I actually don't hit this with my leg when I'm standing up and climbing. So yeah, super happy with this bag. It's supposed to be waterproof as well. I don't know if I 
believe that actually. Uh, this says something like 5,000 millimeters water pillar or whatever you call it. Yeah, I probably wouldn't leave my electronics there in a day long downpour, but what can you do? It's pretty cheap as well, which is another plus. On the front, we have changed quite a bit. I always wanted to have a holster type handlebar solution. Most of them you see that are pretty heavy and bulky. And recently, Revelate Designs came up with this pronghorn, which is super minimalistic and lightweight. You know, when I see stuff that says lightweight on them, I need to get it. No, I'm just kidding. But it's really, really slim. And the dry bag that comes with the kit is Dyneema. So also super light, waterproof, and supposed to be very rugged. It's the first Dyneema product I'm using, so, uh, so far so good. This is the smallest version. Uh, since I only have my pretty lightweight tent and my sleeping pad, I just wanted to go as small as possible. If I need something bigger, I can just get a bigger dry bag if I want to eventually. But this was actually the perfect size for the stuff that I want. I also got a front pouch for it, which is pretty big actually. Pretty overkill for this setup. As you can see, I don't have a huge amount of clearance for the tire. So can be something to take into account if you're looking to get something similar on a smaller bike frame this would probably be pretty tight. This route is mostly paved, so no really shaky bits. But if I were to ride this on gravel, I'm pretty sure this would start hitting the tire. Luckily, you can actually route the, the straps over the handlebars instead, and then you will lift up the whole bag a bit more. Since I want to have room for my hands, I decided to strap it below the handlebar since it's giddy giddy safe, as we say here. The kit also comes with these foam spacers. So like I said, previous said, I can get my hands around the bars, no problem. Even though I have pretty narrow bars, these are 40s at the hoods. Thanks to the flare, I can still ride in the drops, no problem. Also foam spacer here to protect the frame from rubbing. So that's good. Although I still recommend putting some kind of protective tape there just to be safe. This far I've been super stoked with this. And it's blue as well, matching the bike. Can't complain about that. Okay, a quick clip from the future, uh, which means I actually didn't get eaten by a bear tonight. I'm on the last climb back home and I've been kind of doing a couple of Instagram stories from this trip and I've gotten a lot of messages from people asking about the frame bag and scratching the paint on the frame. So I thought I would just address that uh, because I figured there would come even more questions when I upload this. So I always use protective frame tape at all the spots. So I have it there, I have it on the down tube, I have it on the head tube and here as well. It's there, see there. It's just clear tape. I think you can find it under helicopter tape as well. Russ from Path Less Pedaled. It's really hard to pronounce for a weirdo like me. He did a video specifically about this just uh, few weeks ago, I think. So I will put the link to his video down in the description. So check that for sure if you want to know more about frame protection for frame bags and stuff like that. So now back to the past. If you're wondering, this is my homemade drone controller station. This is a GoPro mount kind of hacked together here. And then I just have a sticky mount on the underside of the controller. So it's, uh, yeah, super stable actually. And when I use it, flip it out and put the phone here, rest the phone on the Garmin, super stable and I can ride and fly at the same time. Yeah, that didn't really have anything to do with the bike packing kit, but I thought I might as well show that since I get a few questions from time to time about the drone setup. And the drone is DDI Mavic Air, if you're wondering. The last thing that's new uh, on the outside of the carrying part of this setup is this. This is the Fidlock bottle. You just twist and it's magnetic and actually super sweet. The problem when you have normal cages like this, you have a bag here and you can't really remove the bottles without messing around a lot. And when riding, it's, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Super simple when riding, one-handed, and it's just shoop, back into place. And haven't lost the bottle this far. 
On the bottom, I showed this in the last video as well. I have a fabric ball that has those studs. Oh, oh, let's see if I can get it off. It goes in here. This works pretty good on the down tube like this. I uh, haven't lost anything while having it on here. I did try to mount it inside the triangle and then I actually ej ejected a bottle. So I stopped using that for the inner side of the triangle. This seems to work much better. Not particularly cheap, but yeah, what can you do? Speaking of price, uh, the prong horn is not the cheapest solution for sure. And with international shipping, that's even more nuts. I think I paid 50 bucks for just the shipping. And that is not really okay, to be honest, but what can you do? So if you think all this is overkill, for a two day, one night trip, uh, you're definitely correct. But since I'm carrying the drone and all the cameras and stuff, it's definitely a lot more extra space that that takes up. So the drone, the camera, the batteries, uh, the, the controller, if it's not on here, it's in this bag. So if I just wanted to go bike packing with no camera gears, just with my mates, I could either just drop this bag or drop the pouch and move every food and stuff into this one. You definitely don't need this if you're just doing short trips like me, but yeah, always need to play with those electronics. This a little fly here. Losing light, like I said, so I will try, I will keep climbing up here and see if I can find somewhere to camp. And once we set up there, I will talk a bit more about the smaller itty bitty things. I bring on my small itty bitty bikepacking trips. Ooh, good morning. It's about 5.30. The little camping spot I found was a parking area. And early in the morning, 4, 4.15, people start showing up, hikers. So, decided to pack in quick. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't do really any recording there, starting making all kinds of ruckus, so... But I took a few clips and I thought I will just talk about it now on the bike. As you can see, I'm still using my Big Agnes Fly Creek UL2, the old version. Love the tent, so compact and for a two-man tent, insanely light. Also left over from last season is my sleeping pad, the Seat to Summit Ultralight, regular, non-insulated, and my trusty Aegis Max down sleeping bag. And tonight, at its coldest, I think it was around 6 to 8 degrees, something like that. And with this merino layer I'm wearing now, and the down vest, I had no really issues in that sleeping bag. If it gets a lot colder than that, I will probably look elsewhere. My cooking kit is a bit new. I actually showed you this Stanley cooking pot in my budget bikepacking video. I'm pretty happy with it, but you definitely need to put it on flat ground because it's so tall. So it might tip over, but for the price, it's pretty unbeatable. Same with the stove, the super cheap titanium stove. Works like a treat. Although this morning I ran out of gas. So always check your gas canister. In terms of those other small bits and pieces, I recently got this Swiss Army knife. It's one of the smaller, I think it's called the Farmer, the model. And it has just the bare essentials. The ones I use is the knife and the actual saw. It's good for cutting down, like if you find small dead branches like this, to cut down in a bit smaller pieces with the saw to make a fire and stuff like that. Didn't make any fire this trip. Probably would have if I would have my friends with me. The priorities are a little bit skewed for those people, like kids and family. Apparently it's more important than bikepacking. Ah, I don't get it. Don't get it at all. Another new piece is my new Sea to Summit inflatable pillow. I'm not holding back on comfort. I actually had a nature hike pillow last season that started to leak. So I woke up like in the middle of the night with a flat pillow. These pillows are so small when they're packed up in their little pouch. So it doesn't take up any space and they weigh next to nothing. So really like that piece. Last but not least, my plastic spork is probably the cheapest thing I own in terms of bike packing and stuff. Very useful. Uh, this is the last spurt over to the other side and then we'll hopefully have some nice views. We just need to go through this first. It's like a freezer in there, so let's go. La 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 la. 
also dark. Okay, I think I'll leave you with some drone footage of this pretty amazing road that goes down here. Like always, if you found this interesting and helpful, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you want more stuff like this. And be sure to let me know if you have any questions. I know I didn't go super crazy in depth, so definitely let me know if there's something specific you want to know about the gear. And I will try to get back to you as good as I can for now. Look at this. <laughs>